deep sea gigantism, where the ocean breeds monsters. We frequently hear about the remains of massive deep sea monsters dragged up on shore after another storm. They all tend to reside at depths of over a thousand meters, where even the most well-known species are monstrous and terrible beasts. But what other giants are hiding beneath the waves? And how come undersea monsters may come to the surface? Many gigantic underwater monsters have been discovered by scientists in the ocean's abyssal zone, at depths ranging from two to 6,000 meters. The Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute published photos of a vestigial Medusa gigantea, also known as the enormous phantom jelly. Collected at a depth of around 2,000 meters in 2004, its tentacles were 10 meters long and its dome was about one meter in diameter. Just imagine if such a jellyfish stung you on the beach. The chances of survival after meeting it are 10 to zero. Scientists suggest it feeds only on plankton and small fish. However, it can swim at a depth of over six and a half kilometers where it can't get sufficient food. Scientists still haven't figured out how it survived, but researchers have even more questions for the giant. The largest squid ever discovered was 13 meters long and weighed almost a ton. Just imagine those large tentacles grabbing the victim and tearing it to pieces. The sun's rays cannot reach the ocean's abyssal zone. Algae and underwater vegetarians cannot possibly survive. So the local ocean dwellers mostly eat marine snow. This constant downpour supplies enough nutrition to nourish deep sea dwellers, including future victims of the giant squid. In reality, they are incredibly sluggish predators. Deep water squids do not attempt to pursue their food. They wait for it to swim up to their tentacles and fall into a lethal trap. It's not the most efficient way, but it does save energy. This is significant since a gigantic squid only consumes 30 grams of fish every day. That serving comprises around 45 calories, almost 50 times less than the typical person's daily calorie intake. A squid may survive on one fish for a few days, but finding prey at that depth is challenging. The population density in the ocean's abyssal zone is much lower than that of the surface. What if a hungry giant squid was searching for something to eat in the shallow water? Giant squids aren't even the creepiest inhabitants of the underwater depth. How do giant Greenland sharks survive in deep waters? They live at a depth of up to 2,200 meters and swim at a speed of only two and a half kilometers per hour. Because of its slow metabolism, the Greenland shark grows just one centimeter yearly. However, it usually grows up to six and a half meters in length, which suggests that such sharks live for a very long time from 250 to 500 years. Scientists believe that the longevity and the enormous size of the Greenland sharks are associated with low temperatures. They prefer the cold Antarctic waters. It feels comfortable at minus 0.6 degrees Celsius. Moreover, the shark is a highly successful hunter. Scientists think it tracks down sleeping prey, swims closer to it, and swallows the victim's hole before it wakes up. The remnants of seals, dolphins, and even whales are found in the stomachs of Greenland sharks. Most likely, the shark finds the corpses of these animals and eats them, but it's a predator, not a scavenger. What makes a shark change its diet? Perhaps its usual prey rises closer to the surface to escape the jaws of the ancient Greenland shark. But if deep sea inhabitants suddenly move closer to the surface of the sea, that could be a disaster. In the ocean's abyssal zone, temperatures range from zero to four degrees Celsius. Researchers say that cold water affects not only the metabolism, but also the size of the body cells. For example, in 2011, an expedition conducted by the Scripps Institute of Oceanography in San Diego, California, discovered a huge single-celled organism in the Mariana Trench at a depth of seven and a half kilometers. This giant amoeba reaches a length of 10 centimeters this is 30,000 times larger than the size of a common single cell amoeba. For comparison, if the Greenland shark could live at such a depth, its length would reach 200 kilometers. Although such sharks fortunately do not exist, not only amoeba cells grow. Look at this sea spider. 
It lives in shallow water and reaches only a few centimeters long. And here is its relative, who lives at a depth of 1,800 meters. The Antarctic sea spider can grow up to 30 centimeters long. These giant spiders can mostly be found off the coast of Australia. They have between 8 and 12 legs. All their vital organs are kept. They feed by sticking their probus into jellyfish, sponges, and other soft-bodied organisms, and sucking bodily fluids out of their prey. Imagine such deep-sea spiders rising to the surface. They will have no chance of survival, not only for their smaller fellows, but they can also destroy an entire ecosystem. Plankton also get much bigger at depth. Look at these amphipods. What's so unusual about this 30 centimeter shrimp? The big deal is that these crustaceans don't usually grow more than two or three centimeters long. Participants of the joint expedition conducted by the University of Aberdeen in Scotland and the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research discovered these enormous amphipods in the Kermadic Trench at seven kilometers. The largest specimen they could retrieve from the bottom was 28 centimeters long. Scavengers include common amphipods. They congregate in large groups and consume the carcasses of aquatic creatures in a couple of hours. Consider enormous amphipods coming to the surface. A swarm of these voracious 30 centimeter shrimps could devour a human in seconds. It's a good thing that amphipods hide from scientists at such great depths. But what if the undersea giants emerge? After all, the giant tin squid is an extraterrestrial thing. Its entire length, including tentacles, can exceed six and a half meters. Scientists believe the enormous tentacles are necessary for hunting. The squid swims, dragging its tentacles down to the ocean floor, trapping little animals in the sticky suckers. However, this unconventional method of hunting is not its most peculiar trait. The maximum depth at which the giant tin squid was discovered was 4,700 meters, while the minimum depth was 1,900 meters. At these depths, the pressure differential is about 300 atmospheres. Can the squid ascend even closer to the surface if it can endure such drops? One day, while relaxing on the beach, you'll have the opportunity to discover whether or not these tentacles are painful. The fact is, deep sea giants vary from shallow water inhabitants in more ways than one. In the gaseous form, their bodies contain no air, the fluid dissolves all of the gas inside their bodies. This enables them to resist hundreds of atmospheres of pressure. However, if a squid, sea spider, or Greenland shark decides to come to the surface due to a drop in air, the air dissolved in their bodies will begin to form gas bubbles. The blood arteries will get clogged as a result of these bubbles. In the deep sea, tear the fragile tissue. The monster will perish. It implies that unless you live in Antarctica, a massive squid is unlikely to seize your leg. If you still want to see any deep sea creatures, you'll need to pack winter clothes because you'll be going to Antarctica. There is no need to dive hundreds of meters into the water to encounter enormous sharks. According to Arthur Woods, a professor at the University of Montana ecological and environmental physiologist, sea spiders and jellyfish may be found in Antarctic seas at the lowest additional depth of only nine meters. This might be because of the high oxygen content of the water and the appropriate temperature. So, would you dare take a dip? Let me know down in the comments below and check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr. Singularity, and I'll see you on the next one.